All right, friend, put a yes in the comments if you've ever struggled or been overwhelmed with paper clutter, right? This is like a near universal problem we're gonna dive deep into today. We're gonna be diving all into three different systems. Some of my favorites I've been teaching my students for now five, six years, so you can reclaim your home from all that paper mess and turn it into a streamlined category of things and just not have to deal with it anymore. But real quick, shocking paper clutter statistics you should know. According to the National Association of professional organizers, the average person spends, get this, 4.3 hours per week searching for papers, which adds up to 200 hours per year. I don't know about you, but I want to reclaim 200 hours of my life. Number two, the average American receives almost 50,000 pieces of mail in their lifetime. Number three, 80% of paperwork we file, we never refer to again makes you think twice about spending all that time and energy filing, right? Okay, so I didn't share these studies with you to make you feel more overwhelmed, but I think it can be good for perspective, right? Tackling paper clutter, even though I know it can be overwhelming, is an investment in your time. The ROI is huge. You're gonna save so much time and energy in the long haul, so it's worth just nipping it in the bud now. And for all my note takers out there, I see you. I want you to write these words down. These are words I live by, and that is this. Create opportunities to get rid of paper, not to handle later, right? Procrastination is a big reason we have paper clutter to begin with, or any clutter for that matter. So we're gonna tackle the three systems to curb your paper clutter, but I need to scream this from the rooftops, right? Hear me roar. Any type of system that I share or anyone shares so that you try to implement when it comes to curbing paper clutter and nipping it in the bud is that they all require some type of consistency. And a big mistake I see people make is they try and pick a system because an influencer or someone they admire does it instead of like, hey, can I actually be consistent with that when it comes down to like my real life? And no matter which system you pick today, I want you to do this if you haven't already. Pick your one spot, determine your one spot in your house that all of the paper will tend to accumulate. So that way it's not scattered all over your kitchen islands, your kitchen tables, in your home office, and literally coming out the wazoo. All of your incoming paper from here on out will now live in that one spot and voila, your life just became a hundred times easier. I'll share my example in my home home in just a minute. And remember, this doesn't mean that this is also where you file papers. Just for the sake of all incoming paper gets funneled to that one location. So your one spot must be accessible and visible. It must make sense with the flow of your home. Now, typically these are found in entryways, but they really don't need to be. If that doesn't make sense with the flow of your home, don't do it that way, right? Think outside the box. And number three, these one spot locations make it easy for you to do what you want to do. Handle, file immediately, and let's talk about that. All right, so system number one, this was actually designed by, of all things, by the zero inbox strategy. This is an email strategy and the goal is to keep your inbox 100% empty. I adopted this quite a few years ago. I feel like I'm an early adopter of this method. It worked so well and here's why. Everything is always handled and I didn't waste time rereading the same email before actually taking action. So if you follow me, you know one of my favorite mottos is OHIO, which is an acronym that stands for only handle it once. It's a beautiful thing. So basically this is a way to Ohio emails and I thought, why can't I apply this zero inbox strategy to physical papers? So I'm not constantly shuffling them around and losing them and wasting time and energy. So guess what? This is how this system, I call it the zero paper clutter strategy, was formed. It's a beautiful thing. I've been using it for years. So here's all you need to make this system work. And the cool thing is you can shop your house. You might already have some of these in place. All it requires is a filing system with four or five slots. Now get ready, all my note takers. You're gonna wanna grab a pen and paper if you don't already have it. The first file you are gonna title today. And anything you need to handle by the end of today goes in that. That can be paper, that can be mail, that can be receipts. Again, it could be any type of incoming paper. The second file, you're gonna label end of week. Same concept, anything you need to handle by the end of week goes in there. Bet you're catching on. Do you know number three? The third one is end of month same thing. Now the fourth one I think is where this shines because again, the reality is the bulk of the paperwork that comes into our home, we don't need to keep forever. We just need to keep it temporarily until we no longer need it. It's no longer applicable. So the fourth one you're going to label FYI, or you could label temporary. Kids' school announcements, upcoming sports games, coupons that have an expiration date, literally anything. Maybe it's a receipt you want to hold on to for 30, 60, or 90 days to make sure you like the item you purchased. That's the type of thing that's going to go in the temporary folder. Older. And then the fifth file is completely optional. It's really just put in place for those who want to scan or have a scanner at home. And papers that end up in there could also be receipts that you want to scan, kids' artwork, contracts, and the like. 
So if you haven't picked up on this strategy, the type of consistency involved is you need to be checking it a little bit a day, a little a week, a little a month, right? And it doesn't take that much time, but if your mind is like feeling overwhelmed and you're like, this is too complicated, I don't see myself being consistent with it, simplify it to a three file system. So number one could be scan and shred. Again, only applicable if you see yourself scanning things. Maybe you just decide you need a shred folder and that would make your life easier. Make this work for you. The second folder would be file and the third would be take action which really is the temporary folder from that last system I shared. And the third system is honestly one of my favorites because it couldn't be any simpler. It's the one bin system. So the one bin system is really exactly how it sounds. We use one bin, again, that's also our one location I talked about. That's where all incoming mail goes into. Now, again, I use this first system I shared with the four folders for my business and all my business paperwork, but for my personal stuff and anything like Wells household related, that was too overwhelming for my husband. So he's like, can we just simplify this? So this is why the one bin system was born because he doesn't like to do a little bit each day. He'd rather do it once a week. So as you can see in this picture right here, that little one bin that sits on our wall, you can see our keys, sunglasses and things get hung up there when we get home from running errands and any incoming mail Monday through Sunday gets put in that top section, that bin, and it starts to accumulate throughout the week. And then once a week, typically Sunday nights, my husband spends about 10 to 20 minutes going through all of the mail and handling it and doing it exactly in one sitting in one spot. And Monday, guess what? I come back to a mostly empty bin after everything's been handled, put away, filed, shredded, whatever needs to happen. Now, my husband loves this. He can be consistent with it. And I thought this would be a great system to implement for all of the kid artwork and kid stuff coming home in my kids' backpacks every day. So throughout the week, Monday through Friday, every day they get home from school, they clean out their backpack, any paper related things go in there. I'll do a quick look to make sure there's not any immediate notices or things I need to sign off on or pay attention to. But the majority of things don't need that immediate response. So again, they go in that one bin. And on Sundays, I go through that and I take a few keepsakes and put it in their keepsake bin in their closet, the rest I scan and recycle or shred. It's really that simple. I handle it once a week. Now, as you are testing out these systems, I say give it at least two to four weeks. And remember, consistency doesn't mean never messing up. It means not giving up. So if you miss a few days here and there, or you mess up, give yourself grace, try and get back on the bandwagon and see if you can make it work for you. One thing I swear by as you are implementing these new routines is to just schedule it. So use your digital planner, digital calendar, physical calendar, put a sticky note on the front of your fridge or somewhere where you'll see it to remind you to do your paper task that is in the system you chose. And this is really gonna help it become an automatic habit. Before you know it, you'll be off to the races and you won't even need those reminders. And before we go, let's talk about some ways to minimize the paper coming into your house, right? It's great to have a system in place to manage it, but if we can reduce some, like, let's do it. Number one, go paperless with bake statements and bills, any and all that you can. Don't bring junk mail into the house, recycle it right away. Essentially, you are Ohio, only handling it once versus putting in your one bin to handle later or one location. So I strategically hung a recycle bag right outside the door of my entryway. So as I get the mail, walk through my garage, I take a few seconds, pull out that junk mail immediately and put it in that bag. And I tell you what, it is so darn satisfying. And while we're talking about junk mail, did you know you can also unsubscribe from unwanted catalogs and mailings and you don't have to be subjected to just receiving all these marketing messages? It's not the case. I actually signed up for a website. I encourage you to do the same. It's called DMA Choice. Dot org And it's like $4 and it's very easy to do. It lasts 10 years and put your information in, your email, your home address, and it unsubscribes you from all those unwanted catalogs and messages very quickly and very easily. Now, if you have another adult or person in the household that also gets tons of junk mail, you're gonna wanna sign them up separately. Again, it's like $4, it lasts a decade. I love it. And I have noticed a reduction in the junk mail coming to my house after signing up for it. So highly recommend. So remember by putting systems in place that you can be consistent with, you can really create a stress-free, clutter-free and organized home. But your papers are just one piece of the puzzle. Click the video on your screen now to learn the next step about keeping your home clutter-free.